All right, guys, so after spending a few years now reviewing gaming laptops, there are a few tips that I've learned along the way that can really improve overall performance, responsiveness, and most importantly, battery life. So what I wanted to do in this video is give you five performance hacks that I've learned along the way that you may or may not have known about. Now, some of them are pretty basic, while others need a bit of investment, but they can make a huge difference. I also have to thank the Omen team for supporting the idea and helping to make this happen. But I need to mention right away that while we will be using the Omen 16 laptop, these tips can be used for pretty much any gaming notebook and even some non-gaming models as well. So let's get started with a quick recap of the Omen 16 I've got here, since it'll give you a good baseline for what to expect uh, from some of the numbers that we'll be throwing at you. And what does that Advantage Edition mean anyways? Well, it's basically AMD's way of branding laptops with Ryzen CPUs and Radeon graphics, which have gaming-focused features. That includes a high refresh rate screen, a thermal design that's focused on delivering low noise levels, and great value. This version has a Ryzen Ryzen 7 5800H and an RX 6600M graphics card powering a 16.1 inch 1080p 144Hz screen. But in case you're interested, there's going to be versions rocking the Ryzen 9 5900HX along with a 165Hz Quad HD display. Anyways, I want to start this video with the simple stuff that I've learned and then move on to a bit more complicated ones if you're willing to poke around a little bit. Now, the first one might sound obvious to some of our usual viewers, but it might not be evident uh, to everyone else. And that's to know your power plants. You see, these days, laptops allow you to easily change system behavior and performance on the fly through simple pieces of software. And by using those tools, you can get a lot more out of your machine than you might actually expect. For example, Omen laptops have access to their whole gaming hub interface, which has a ton of options, but the ones I'm talking about deal with performance. Now here you'll find a couple of settings including balanced and performance modes, along with a setting that'll allow the fan to run at maximum speed. Even though the Omen 16 comes out of the box with the balance setting active, the difference between it and the performance mode is actually really huge, especially in gaming. Check this out. What happens is in performance mode, you get a good bump in frame rates since it favors GPU clock speeds. I mean, sure, it does increase fan speeds by a little bit, but the whole point behind these modes is to allow you to modify the laptop's behavior to your needs. If you want more performance, boom, you hit that switch and you get it right away. But if you need something a little bit more peaceful and quiet, well, there is that balance setting for you. At least on this laptop, HP's dynamic power works with their Tempest cooling design to equally balance out performance, regardless of the mode you're in. I've seen that other models usually tend to have a much bigger difference in CPU-only tasks too, so take that into account. But either way, switching to performance from balance does give a bit of an uplift, and it usually makes a big difference in battery life as well. So go ahead, poke around a little bit in your laptop's preloaded software, and play around with those settings, because you never know, you might get to experience some interesting results. And speaking of battery life, I'm actually gonna use a trick taken right out of the smartphone playbook for this next tip. Now, if you're spending way too much time away from the plug, just reach into your settings and lower your screen's refresh rate. Now, this is only applicable to laptops with 60 hertz or higher, uh, but check this out. On the Omen 16, I was able to improve battery life from about six hours with its default 144 hertz to just over seven hours by forcing the screen to run at 60 hertz. Now, that might not seem like much, but for a lot of folks, they would actually kill for almost an extra hour while being in class or on a flight or just chilling at a coffee shop. Just take note that some laptops automatically knock refresh rates down when running on battery mode, so this won't impact you, but keep in mind that most laptops don't have this feature. And if you're wondering about how to do this, well, just click on your desktop, hit display settings, and then scroll down and select advanced display settings, and you'll find the refresh rate near the bottom. Just remember to reactivate the high refresh rate when gaming or you'll lose one of the best features of your laptop. Okay, so there's another little trick that goes a long way towards improving your laptop's performance, and that's to uninstall any antivirus programs like McAfee and Norton and replace them with something that's less resource heavy. I mean, look, even though the advertisements say otherwise, they're actually pigs that gobble up system resources because there are plenty of better tools out there and a lot of them are completely free. I mean, for most folks, the built-in Windows Defender is perfectly fine and it's free, but if you need that extra layer of defense, something like Avira is pretty awesome, or even Malwarebytes if you're okay paying a little bit of protection beyond what Windows already has built in. I mean, check this out. The results are just nuts. Granted, I didn't modify any settings in Norton or McAfee, but 
out of the box, they're obviously using valuable CPU cycles to do their things, while Defender and Malwarebytes don't take nearly as many resources. Now, I don't want to get into their effectiveness, but this really does tell an interesting story if you're wondering why you should be getting more performance from your laptop than you actually are. All right, so now it's time to move beyond these simple solutions to ones that are a bit more complicated or could involve some investment. But there's still something you need to know. The first one of those involves you having either a monitor or even a TV. I know one of the main benefits of having a laptop is having an integrated panel, but hear me out, guys. If your laptop has a discrete GPU, having an HDMI or display port powering an external display has some serious gaming performance benefits. Just take note that this won't work if you're using integrated GPU graphics. In this case, I'm hooking up the Omen 16 to one of their new Omen 25i gaming monitors. All in all, this is a pretty standard 1080p design with some awesome features like a 165 hertz IPS screen that's compatible with NVIDIA's G-Sync and FreeSync Premium Pro. I'll be powering it via the Omen 16's handy mini display port, though keep in mind that both the monitor and laptop have HDMI 2.1 ports as well. And the results here are pretty interesting with some competitive games like CSGO and Valorant getting massive performance boosts. Meanwhile, pretty much every other title I tried had some benefit, even if they were smaller ones. From a technical standpoint, this is because most but not all gaming laptops have their HDMI and DisplayPort connectors directly attached to the discrete GPU, while the laptop screen is usually connected through the integrated graphics. So that means if you're using the integrated display, that fast GPU has to pass its data through the IGP slower frame buffer, which can cause a bit of additional latency and results in well, what you're seeing here. The last thing I want to mention is in order to get the best performance out of your laptop, you need to know your memory, guys. Now, I know this might sound a bit odd, but over the years, some companies have been putting some slow modules into their laptops, and lately, it's become a bit worse. I'm not talking about raw clock speeds or even advertised timings like you normally see on kits like 22, 22, 22. No, these are actually secondary timings you don't normally see, and they're just as important. Now, I do have to give Omen some credit here since um, this laptop actually comes with some decent memory. So it's a good baseline to start with. But anyways, let's check it out with a handy little app called Zen Timings. Now on the left-hand side, you'll see the kit that HP installed onto their Omen 16. While on the right, there's a kit I pulled out of a different gaming laptop. On the surface, everything is identical like frequencies and primary timings. But as we drill down, you'll notice the other kit is much, much slower in a lot of cases. But what does that all translate into real-world applications and games? Well, when talking about less memory-intensive apps like Maya or Blender, the gap isn't all that much. But when you move on to some others, and it becomes pretty significant, and the difference will continue to grow if you throw longer workloads into the mix. Gaming is where you'll probably see the biggest change when comparing the fast and slow memory modules, especially in games that are CPU limited. Some don't have any change, but competitive shooters like CSGO and Valorant, I mean, wow, that difference is crazy. So what can you do about this? Well, first of all, educate yourself about the memory being used in your laptop to see if there's performance being left on the table. Um, in the Omen 16's case, it actually turned out that HP equipped it with a good kit, but other laptops might not be so lucky. The only solution is to upgrade the memory with a kit that'll run at tighter secondary timings. Luckily, most gaming laptop manufacturers like Omen have pretty easy access to the memory by just unscrewing the bottom cover and then replacing the modules. Just watch out since some laptops are now coming with one bank of memory soldered into place, which is really frustrating. So what you need to look for is a kit that runs natively at whatever the speed your laptop's original memory is running at, and one that doesn't need XMP to hit its frequency. Uh, but since there's usually no listing of secondary timings, you might want to do a bit of research on forums like Reddit to see what people are recommending. Right now, though, your best bet is to pick up the standard OEM modules from Crucial since they run at great all-around timings right now. And I say right now because there's just no way to know whether at some point they'll roll out ones with slower secondary timings. Either way, about 80 bucks for that kind of performance improvement, especially in gaming, is money well spent in my opinion, guys. And if you really want to splurge, there's always some dual rank 32 gigabyte kits out there as well. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Hope you're able to take away something from these five little performance tips or hacks that I've learned over the past few years. Uh, but if I missed anything, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And who knows, maybe I'll make a part two video on how to increase your laptop's performance. 
Uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And um, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.